السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners We all know that these are the last few nights of the month of Ramadan, the most blessed of nights of this particular month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to take away whomsoever He wishes on these nights or within these days, blessed days of the month of Ramadan. Definitely it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be taken away in nights or in days like these days. News has got to me yet again of yet another of the mothers of the community I come from who was taken away tonight. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her mercy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill her grave with nur and to grant her paradise and to grant sabr to all those whom she has left behind. As well as all those who have passed away in this community and in all the communities of the Muslimin across the globe. The marhumin of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. And the day he takes us away, may he take us away with ease. And may he also have mercy on us on that particular day. Beloved brothers and sisters, we all know that marriage is a topic that everyone lights up when they hear it. Alhamdulillah. For those who are married, they have a lesson to learn. And for those who are not married, they have even more lessons to learn, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us something very, very strong and powerful. He says, I guarantee paradise for certain people. If you guarantee me something, I guarantee you heaven. I guarantee you paradise. So what did he say? He says, Whoever guarantees me the correct use of what is between the cheeks, and the correct use of what is between the thighs, I guarantee them paradise. Allahu Akbar. It sounds nice and simple, but our whole life rotates around it. You can guarantee the correct use of your tongue and your private parts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you through the lips of the most blessed that you have a guarantee of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Every creature of ours we've created in pairs, if only but you would remember, or in order that you may remember and be reminded. Subhanallah. We have positive and negative. We have male and female. We have live and neutral. We have the sun and the night. Or should I say the day and the night? Everything we have in pairs, whether it is a plant, there is masculine and feminine. Fish, masculine, feminine. You have the eggs and you have the masculine of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. So it is part and parcel of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His plan. He says that indeed, It is amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created spouses for you from amongst you for a reason. And that reason is made mention in the Quran in order that you may achieve comfort from your spouse, in order that you may enjoy the pleasure of your spouse's company, in order that you may live with pleasure and with happiness, in order that you may have every reason to smile. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. What happens to us nowadays, before marriage, we've already lived together under the shadows of shaitan. So shaitan beautifies everything for us and we then marry for the wrong reasons. And then what happens is once we marry, shaitan's job turns 180 degrees. Instead of trying to make you commit adultery, now that you are halal, automatically he wants you to fight with one another so you can commit adultery with someone else. And that is why as soon as people who have married for the wrong reasons get married, they then come complaining to say 
This was not the same person I knew before I was married. The reason is sometimes the way we did it was totally wrong. So let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ From the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He has created for you from amongst you a spouse in order for you to achieve comfort and pleasure from and indeed Allah has placed in your hearts love for one another. He has placed in your hearts love for one another and definitely that is a sign for those who would like to ponder. Subhanallah. People who are married for the right reasons and they have been married under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally they will have a feeling towards their wives or husbands. They will feel they will feel very very protective and very possessive. That is a natural feeling that Allah places automatically which was not there prior to the nikah, prior to the marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors. Another very interesting point, the laws of the sharia regarding marriage which is known as nikah is very very easy. The reason why Allah has made marriage one of the most easy acts of worship, one of the most easy, really, if you take a look at it, how quick it happens, one of the most easy transactions that take place. You know, if you want to do a business deal, it takes a little bit longer. But if you would like to get married, it's a one minute job, 30 seconds in most. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. One of the reasons why this is the case is because nobody must be left with an excuse to fall in the trap of shaitan and commit adultery. Anyone who commits adultery does not have an answer to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I've intentionally made it easy for you. Are you still going to go out to hunt for haram when I have allowed you to marry? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and happiness in our marriages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Amazingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important the consciousness of Allah is when it comes to marriage. A successful marriage is based on certain elements. Let's take a look at the verses that are read at the time of nikah. The time when someone wants to get married, there is a sunnah. It is not like it is compulsory to read these verses, but generally it is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which should be adopted because a sunnah is not to be taken lightly. It is something great. One of the verses read there, Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakumu alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah. O mankind, be conscious of your Rabb. Be conscious of your creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider. Be conscious of the one you are going to return to. The one who has created you from one soul. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And he has created from that soul its spouse. Which means Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon her, was created from Adam alayhi salatu was salam. There is nothing bad to confirm that yes, she was created from the rib of Adam alayhi salatu was salam according to the narration which is correct of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are people who are tackling this narration. That is unvalid. We have actually been through it and we've been through it, authenticating it. People who want to appease the women folk to say you were created from a crooked rib. And that is why they want to start fighting the narrator of the hadith who is Abu Huraira. That is dangerous. Accept the hadith. It is an honor to be created from something alive. Whereas man was created from something dead and that is soil. Allahu Akbar. So that is a plus point for the females inshallah. Sometimes that is why the men say, that is why they talk too much. May Allah protect us. They were created from something alive. That is not what we believe. We definitely believe that it is an honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for both men and women. Remember, a woman was granted as a gift to man after he made so much dua. It is reported by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah in one of his books, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, that Adam alayhi salatu was salam was very lonely and he made a dua, Ya Allah, I am lonely. Imagine he was one of his kind. The rest were in pairs. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he made a dua for a period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day decided to give him a gift in the form of a female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize that females are actually gifts to us. And may he make the females realize that they are meant to be living in such a way that they act like gifts to us. Alhamdulillah. Sometimes you have females beating up the males. I don't know which gift comes out of the box and beats up the one whom they are given as a gift to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that. And it's amazing how powerful it is. Allah says, I have created the female from the male. That is a clear verse at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa. Then he says, وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا and he has caused a multitude, a multitude of growth of male and female throughout the globe from those two. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us also to continue this progeny or this offspring, man who will be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Be conscious of Allah. Notice how it is repeating itself again. Allah says, be conscious of Allah. Because consciousness of Allah, and I am adding this obviously, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vital when it comes to marriage. If you take a wife or if a wife has a husband and you are conscious of your duty to your creator, the fact that he is watching you, the fact that he is always there, you will never disrespect or cheat or utter words which are bad or you will never do anything wrong because you know that Allah is there. He is more able. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be conscious of Allah and be conscious of the wombs. Allahu Akbar. Be conscious of Al-Arham. Arham is the plural of Rahim, which means the womb of a woman. Those relatives of yours who are related to you through birth, Allah says, be conscious of them. Be conscious of your wives, your mothers, your mothers in law, and so on. Remember, a man has a role to play, and that role is to strike a balance between his wife, his own mother, and his parents in law. And if a, if a man is not going to play his role and run away and duck and dive, he will create a bigger disaster. He needs to draw lines from day one to say, Mom, I love you the most. But the love I love you is totally different from the love I love my wife. That is a different type of love. Mom, this is the line you shall not cross. And my beloved wife, here is a line you don't cross. That is my mother, you don't come and tell me stories about her. If she is wrong, you mention it in a very polite manner. You don't fight with her, maybe you can come to me and tell me in a polite manner exactly what is going on. But I don't want to hear tales and fairy tales and stories which, are, which have salt and pepper added to them just to make me against my own mother. Allahu Akbar. You will never be able to replace a mother, but a wife, you can have ten of them. Allahu Akbar. Remember four at any given time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. I better clarify that because people might go and say, this man believes you can have 10 wives. No. What we mean is you can get another wife and another one if you'd like. But your mother, there's only one. At the same time, there are many mothers who are very sadly oppressive towards their daughters-in-law. We have witnessed it and we have seen it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. In the English language, they are called in-laws. One wonder why the law has to come into place. Maybe the lawyers and everyone else also gets involved at some stage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We need to have a brilliant relationship. You must give your children independence after they are married. The only time you interfere is when they are going against the commands of Allah. If they are not reading salah or dressing inappropriately or swearing and so on, then you can interfere. It is your duty. But whether or not they attend a function with you is up to them. Whether or not they live with you is up to them. And you should happily allow them to live separately because that is a right that they have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. My experience is those who live further away from their parents are happier with their parents than those who live within the same house. That is experience. We have seen it and witnessed it across the globe. You cannot have two kings in one kingdom, nor can you have two queens in the same kingdom. So if your wife is a queen, your mother is also a queen. And if both want to rule, they are going to cross paths at some stage. It is not going to work. One woman per kitchen. Let us try and use that rule and understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding. And yes, if there are people who love each other and they are living with the live and let live policy, then Alhamdulillah, we will encourage that as well. 
in the rare case where mother-in-law is getting on with daughter-in-law, then alhamdulillah, that is nurun ala nur. That is light upon light. It is goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the very beginning, be careful, be conscious. And He says, you, Allah is watchful over you. He is writing down absolutely everything. There are angels writing down what you are doing, how you are thinking, what you are saying, behind closed doors, how you are treating your wife, your children, those who are near you. That is a verse that is read when the nikah is about to take place in the masjid. Let's look at another verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe The first address was O people This one here is O you who believe Be conscious of your Rabb as you are meant to be conscious of Him and do not die except in the condition of submission. Look at how the verses of consciousness are being repeated, not by mistake, intentionally at the time of nikah, to remind you, watch out from this day, be extra conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who oppresses a woman, Allahu Akbar. We will come to verses tonight, inshallah, if Allah gives us the time. Otherwise, we will continue tomorrow with the same topic if we do not complete it, inshallah. Because I don't want to rush through one of the most important topics. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He listens to a woman who complains directly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has revealed another verse that we read at the same occasion. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa koolu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yawfir lakum dhunubakum وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, O oh you who believe, be conscious of your Creator and only utter that which is upright, that which is correct, that which is full of politeness, that which is full of bringing people together. Abstain from that which will create problems and difficulty and disunity. Only utter that which will bring about happiness, that which will bring about a smile, that which will bring about justice. Allah says, only utter that which is upright. If you do that, then definitely Allah will make pure your deeds for you and forgive your sins. Whomsoever follows Allah and His Messenger has definitely won and is very greatly victorious. Imagine Allah is telling you, follow Allah and His Messenger. If your wife instructs you to do something haram, you won't listen. And if your husband instructs you to do something prohibited, you won't listen. Because Allah and His Messenger are to be followed before everybody else. That verse also implies that directly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, only utter that which is upright. Why is it so important to mention the words of the tongue at the occasion of marriage? Because 99% of marital problems are connected to our tongues. 99% of problems are connected to the way we speak in our marriages. We need to utter on a daily basis words that will put a smile on the faces of our spouses. We need to crack jokes which are decent inshallah with our spouses. The Prophet wasallam did it. He made his wives smile and blush and laugh as well. Subhanallah. Obviously within the limits sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was as romantic as could be sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There was an incident when he was eating a piece of meat. And Aisha radiallahu anha picked up this piece of meat and bit from it. And he looked at her from the corner of his eye. And he watched that she was watching him. So he picked up the piece of meat and he turned it around to find the place that she bit from. And looking at her with the corner of his eye, he then bit from exactly the same place, making her blush. Subhanallah. With us, if the wife has bitten, we will say, if I bite, I'm going to get the cough you have. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imagine to drink from a cup at exactly the same position that your wife drank from is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why do we have to wait for the month of Ramadan? to hear this type of thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us a lot. And this is why he says, look, be careful of your tongues. You can utter good words or bad words. Say for example, there is something that you notice within the marriage. You need to talk. Communication is the most important thing in marriage. 
A lot of women folk, very sadly, they are upset. Suddenly it takes three weeks to find out why they were upset. And then we will find out it was something that really was not even worth mentioning. And this is why advice to everyone in this verse, speak that which is upright. Speak up when you have to speak. Because when you are silent, when you have to speak, it is also against the etiquettes of marriage. And a happy home will not be achieved. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. You need to talk. You have a problem, speak. But in good words. If you are sick, say that, look, I'm not well, that's why I'm not smiling. A husband comes to the home after a long day at work and he sees a woman cross. Wallahi, it puts his heart really on a different note, very low note. He feels like leaving the house once again. But a woman, to be honest with you, controls the love that a man has for her in almost all cases. Because when a woman pampers the man and looks after him and smiles at him and waits for him and is prepared to, to cook for him and really do everything for him naturally even if he likes it or not at some stage he will feel an inclination towards this woman and this is why the Prophet wasallam, when he distributed his wealth and his time perfectly he then says Allahumma hadha qasami fima amlik fala tuakhidhni fima la amlik Oh Allah, I've distributed that which I control between my wives. I am being just amongst them. So now don't hold against me what I do not control. And that is how much I love them. They control it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He said clearly, I love Aisha more than the rest. Fadlu Aisha ka fadli tharidi ala sa'ir ta'am. He says, Aisha, the virtue of her above all the other women is like the virtue of the favorite food above the rest of the food. When you see the favorite food, mashallah, you will first take it close to you and you will first eat from it. Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet ﷺ has instructed us and the instruction is for all of us to ensure that we are just with our wives and at the same time, we realize and understand that the love generally, if a man is a normal man, then he, the how much he loves his wife will mainly depend on what she does for him or what she does not do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our wives from amongst those who can serve us. The Western world is teaching us that the wife doesn't need to serve the husband. And that is why you find the husband then looks outside the doors in order to look for someone whom he will get attention from. Someone who might cook for him because the wife says you must bring takeaways. Takeaways are good once in a while. Some people are marrying on condition that the husband brings takeaways on a daily basis. Or you must take me out every Saturday, I won't cook. If that is the case, yes, he might do it for us with his wealth, but you lose his love. Allahu Akbar. The heavier you are on his pocket, the less he will love you. It is a fact, it is natural and it happens. The more demanding you are, the less he loves you. He will go for someone else. And who would have caused that? Yourself with your own actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Many men who look outside many times, many times, and many, many times the woman is to blame, but it's difficult for us to tell her. Because sometimes she cannot discuss the topics of what is going on behind the scenes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is why He tells us how important communication is in marriage. Let me quickly go through some of the most important items that will make a home extremely happy. If you would like a happy home and a happy marriage, you need to spend the time with one another. You need to spend the time with your wife and your children and your family members. You need to be tolerant of one another. You need to tolerate the differences that you have and speak. You need to trust one another completely. Don't pry into each other's little corners and cubicles. May Allah protect us. And at the same time, don't give your spouse the reason to doubt you. But don't ever doubt your spouse unnecessarily just by an anonymous phone call or something. Because that is a cancer. It will lead to divorce. And believe me, at times people are just mischief makers. All marriages go through turbulence. Let's understand and realize that if we are going to trust our spouses and give them a chance and tolerate and so on, inshallah, we will be able to deal with our crises. Another very interesting point, to be tender and lenient, to be calm and polite. That is also a very, very interesting point that we need to take or bear in mind if we'd like our marriages to work. A person who is hard and harsh or a female who is hard and harsh in the way she talks, Others will turn away from them according to the Quran. O Prophet of Allah, if you were hard-hearted and if you 
harsh, they would have dispersed from you. If that instruction was for the Prophet wasallam, what about us with our own spouses? They will disperse from us if we are hard and heavy. They will not like us. Their love for us will be reduced. So let us learn to speak in a very polite manner with sweet words. You have to beautify your voice when you are speaking to your spouse. Why do we tend to do that when we are speaking to others besides our spouses whom we are not even supposed to be talking to in the first place? Won't that then result in some form of negativity in the hearts of our spouses when they say our husband is good to all the women on earth but not to us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us a person who is excellent to other women on the street nine times out of ten when he comes home they fear him Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us we need to be normal outside you don't have to be overly excellent normal outside but at your home or within the house you need to be Overly excellent inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us politeness. Another very interesting point is we need to realize marriage is all about sacrifice. If you are not prepared to sacrifice, then your marriage will probably not work. It will be void of love. You need to sacrifice your time, your effort, your money, your brains, your mind. Everything needs to be sacrificed. And there is no room for laziness in marriage. Many people are in love and then suddenly they get married. And then the wife doesn't even know how to cook. May Allah protect us. And she sleeps until 11 in the morning. If that is the case, he will get lazy and he will get fed up and he won't. Or the love in his heart for you will begin to diminish very soon. Because there are other women who get up at 5 in the morning and make a hot cup of tea with a little bit of breakfast and bring it to bed. May Allah protect us all. I'm not encouraging, promoting or demoting any breakfasts in bed. But at the same time, we are saying that we need to think of this. Don't be lazy. Look after the children and you will earn the love of your husband, inshallah. At the same time, spoil him rotten. And inshallah, you will protect yourself from being rotten, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of how important it is to sacrifice in marriage, to be thankful and grateful to, for what your spouse has done for you. If your wife is looking after your children and is cooking for you and so on, think about it for a moment. How much time and effort does she spend behind you? And at the same time, when the husband is spending so many hours earning a livelihood in order to bring back a plate of food on the table, thank him at times. Say, I thank you. I appreciate it. Wallahi, you've done so much for me. I really, really appreciate this and show it in every single way. Thankfulness is part and parcel of rekindling your marriage, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how important expressions on your face are. Always have a smile. Always try to be happy. Always show good expressions. You know, a wink or two is also quite romantic at times between husband and wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us use our expressions where they are most beneficial and not where they are detrimental. Outside the home, mashallah, we have a smile stuck on our faces. As soon as we come home, we are frowning like we've never ever frowned before. Remember, even if you'd like, if you'd like to age slowly, why I say slowly is because we have to age. If Allah gives us life, we have to age. But if you'd like to age slowly, learn to smile. Believe me, you will, you will not age as quickly as those who frown. When you frown, your forehead has a mark. And that mark will become really engraved into your forehead. Even when you are happy, they will still see that mark. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So it's a reality. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that we need to have an understanding between one another. You need to draw your limits and your lines. Say what you want. Tell her what will make you happy and let her tell you what will make her happy. And you need to know what is going to make your spouse upset and angry and stay away from it. This is something that we need to understand. Another very interesting point. We need to put ourselves in the spouse's shoes. So a man must look at it from the angle of the woman and the woman must look at it from the angle of a man in order to come and try and understand where they are coming from. That is extremely important. Another very interesting point. The tone of your voice and the volume of your voice. If you raise your voice in the house, you will decrease your respect in the house. When you scream, you, you reduce your respect in the house immediately. And when you do not shout and scream and you do not swear, then inshallah people will respect you. The minute you scream, your value has already been lost in the eyes of those who witnessed that. 
If it was your children, they will remember it forever and ever. And this is why for husband and wife to swear or scream or shout or accuse or clean their linen in front of the children is extremely dangerous because as the children grow up, it will haunt them forever and ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection. And also, this is why it is important that we realize when we scream and shout, we will sound like donkeys as the Quran says. And who wants to marry a donkey? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding. I know I'm using terms here to keep people awake at this time of the night, alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to make us from those who can use the best of words to select your word when you are speaking to your wife or your children is an act of worship. So if you want to tell your children not to make noise, if you say shut up without thinking, you will not be rewarded for it and you might even be sinful for using abusive language. But if you were to think very carefully and say, I can either say keep quiet or I can say lower the volume or I can either look at them and put a finger on my lips in order to tell them to be silent. I must employ the best method to portray what I'd like to say what is in my heart. If I want to put it across, let me choose the best word. Allah has given us a brain. This brain, we need to use it in the house before we use it outside, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. These are just some tips to start with. Look at the topic, Allahu Akbar. Now let's go through the verses of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how to choose a spouse. We need to choose a person. When we are choosing, we look at several qualities. You look at the beauty, there's nothing wrong in looking at the beauty, alhamdulillah. You can look at their standing, their reputation and so on. But that must not be the deciding factor. The deciding factor must be the closeness to Allah. How pious are they? How conscious are they of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you are choosing a wife, you are choosing the mother of your children. If you forget that for a minute, you will be failing in the long run. Because let me tell you, the children generally are taught by the mother. If the mother is a person who was not brought up but grew up like wild grass, then there will be no upbringing for her children. They will also just grow like wild grass. May Allah protect us. There is a very big difference between being brought up and just growing up. We would like to bring up our children and we would not like to see them just grown up suddenly. And who brought them up? The street. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why it is very, very detrimental for a woman to give up her role as a woman because yes, it might not be prohibited to go out to work within the Islamic limits, but you may just be giving up your obligation of looking after your children. And nowadays we have a new generation of orphans with parents. They are orphaned because the father and mother are not there whole day. They are brought up by the neighbors and the school and the maids. And then when they come home at a certain age, suddenly the parents realize my son is already in love and my son already has AIDS and my son is already on drugs. Then they come crying. But where were you, my dear mother? I was at work. And where were you, you my dear father? I was at work. What time did you go to work? At six in the morning. When did you come back? At eight at night. Did you ever spend time with your children? The answer is no. Who is to blame? You, Allahu Akbar. This is why let's realize that it's a last resort. For women to work is a last resort. Do not be upset. Believe me, there are women in the West who are now fed up of working. They've realized that this is all a farce. Men want to use us and abuse us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If you play your role that Allah has kept for you, Wallahi, I promise you, you will not go wrong. You will be happy when you see your children grow up and hug you and thank you for the upbringing. A woman, her primary role is to give birth and to look after the children and the home. That is why Allah placed the womb in her belly and not in the belly of a man. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept feminine qualities of motherhood in her and not in a man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to respect our mothers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the mothers of this ummah responsible mothers as well as the fathers of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So when we are choosing a spouse, we should realize if you have based your opinion only on beauty, beauty will go. If you have based your opinion only on wealth, the wealth will go. If you have based your opinion only on reputation, the reputation may be tarnished overnight. But if you base it on spirituality, the spirituality will only increase as time passes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So we are not saying don't look at what she looks like. No, you need to look at what she looks like. You need to look at all the other aspects as well. But 
If there is no deen, no religion, no spirituality, you'd rather go for someone else and you'd rather go for a third person or a fourth or a fifth and continue trying until you get to the one who has the deen as well as the beauty inshallah. Something that is acceptable to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us inshallah happiness within our homes. I see a lot of people are looking at me quite gloomy. I think they married and they feel they might have already made mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, really. Please don't give me those looks, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enhance our marriages, inshallah. There is always an opportunity to rekindle a marriage if you would like to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to resolve and solve our problems and disputes. Amen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then informs us of how we should not marry those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are on a different page altogether. Imagine people come and tell us that, you know, I'd like to get married to this person. They're not Muslim and they don't want to become a Muslim. Well, to be honest with you, I want to give you an example. If you are a vegetarian completely, you, you, are not, you cannot have anything else. And there is a woman who only is on a seafood diet. I don't mean seafood as in whenever she sees food, she eats it. But I mean seafood as in fish. If she is only on a seafood diet, and you are only a vegetarian, you might get on for one month or two months maximum. After that, the cracks will appear. You will get fed up of seeing fish when you can't eat it. And she will get fed up of seeing vegetable when she can't have it. So if people whose difference in food will cause a split in marriage, then you should realize religion is far more important. You are on two different pages that marriage will never ever work. I don't know to this day of a single marriage of people of different religions that has worked in the manner that marriages are supposed to work unless they are really forcing themselves to be with one another. At some point down the line it has broken or there are huge cracks. And if there is anyone whom it hasn't cracked yet, believe me, it's coming. Wait for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So let us not look for those outside our religion. Because if we as men want to marry women outside our religion, who will marry our women? The men from outside our religion as well. And that is completely prohibited. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deep understanding. So if we take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يؤمن. Don't ever marry one who associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside the fold of Islam until they accept Islam. Allah says a slave girl who is a mu'mina is better than a free lady who has a high ranking who is not a mu'mina. Even if she amazes you and impresses you by her wealth or her looks and what have you, Allah says it's better for you to have gone for a slave girl who was a mu'mina, who was a believer, than one who was not a believer and who was high in ranking, in social ranking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And the same applies to the females. Allah says, do not marry the non-Muslims until they accept Islam. That is the address to the females. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding, really. So if someone is ready to accept Islam, yes, we will welcome them into our religion inshallah, and we will open our arms and accept them into this religion and into our homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to choose spouses who will be the best for us inshallah. Now let's get to something else. Sometimes a person who enters the fold of Islam is actually at a later stage a better Muslim than those who brought them into the fold. Allahu Akbar. And we've witnessed that and we've seen it a lot as well. So if a person comes into the fold of Islam sometimes, and sometimes they might come in because of the marriage, but later on Allah grants them the true guidance where they begin to obey the instructions of the religion in a deeper manner than us because they've seen the other side of the coin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us as strong and even stronger inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are not allowed to marry those whom your fathers have been intimate with in any way. Don't ever marry those whom your fathers have been intimate with. If they have married them naturally, if your father has married someone, they are naturally your mahram. 
They are your closest, your close relatives. You cannot marry someone whom your father has married. Nor can you marry someone whom your son has married. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. And there is a list of people whom we are not allowed to marry in the Quran. Those who are closest to us, your aunts, your uncles, your nephews, your nieces, your grandparents and so on. And your, your uh, certain, a certain circle of your relatives that are mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are extremely close to you. You will not marry them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter. And before I move to the next point, we need to realize that I was saying when you are marrying, look for the father of your children. Think to yourself, is this person fit to be the mother of my children or the father of my children, depending on whether it is the man or the woman who is, who is looking into this. And if they are not fit for that, then opt for someone else. No matter how, how blossoming it sounds and how beautifying it sounds. As I say, you see the lamps that we have here. The light, the bulb that you have, one day it will pop. The light that you have, one day it will pop. Subhanallah. So if you marry someone for the bright look on their, on their faces, one day that bright look will pop. It will go. When the creases start coming below the eyes, then people begin to turn for others. May Allah protect us. But if you married them for the heart, for what you love inside, that will only increase and develop as the years go further. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it is important that when a woman wants to marry, you don't block her for no reason. If you are the father of a female, you don't block her for no reason. A woman wants to marry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who are married. When they are having a problem and they are separated, then they want to get back to their husbands. Sometimes you get family members who come to them and say, no, don't. If they want to get back and if they want to marry them or remarry them in the case where it is allowed, then in that particular case, if you block them, then you will be a major sinner. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't block the females from marrying whom they would like to marry. Unless obviously there is an Islamic reason for you to block it like the man is a drunkard or he is a drug addict or he is extremely oppressive and so on. But if there is no Islamic reason, just because you don't get on with them does not mean your daughter must not marry them. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَن يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ In the instance of a woman who is separated or divorced, and after that she wants to get back to the same individual, if three divorces are not issued, only one was issued or two, and she still wants to get back to that man, then you should allow her to get back. If she wants, don't block her and don't stop her on condition that the two have arrived at an understanding of goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about the engagement. Let me clarify this for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word khitbah, which means the engagement. In Islam, an engagement is only a confirmation that the two of us are going to get married. That is already an engagement. There is no party, there is no distribution of sweets, there is no nothing. All that is excess, it is culture and it is something that sometimes we make life difficult through. The mere fact that two people have now, two families have agreed that we are going to get married inshallah or the two are going to get married, you are already engaged subhanallah. There is nothing like an engagement ring in Islam. All that is extra, it's excess. And people who do it, if they do it just out of happiness, inshallah, it should be okay. But if they do it thinking that it's a must, hey, we're engaged, where's my ring? Otherwise, I'm going to break this engagement. If that's the case, you don't need to marry that woman. Believe me, because when you marry, she will ask you for your pay packet the day you get your salary. Allahu Akbar. And one day when your salary is less, she might even instruct you to move out of the house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. The hadith speaks about marriage and says, some of the marriages that are the most blessed are those that the least amount of wealth is used, least extravagance. You know when we have marriages, we are taught to have a simple marriage. Why? Because it is an act of worship. 
Marriages are acts of worship and this is why when we have our functions of walima, a walima is the function out of happiness. It is an act of worship that we have either at the hall or at the home. We must make sure that we do not engage in earning the anger of Allah. Marriage is half of your iman according to one of the narrations. The walima or that party is a celebration of half of your iman. If you are celebrating half of your iman by allowing women to come into the gathering who are not even dressed properly or the bride herself is half naked and the groom wants to sit with the females, then you are celebrating half of your iman by pleasing shaitan. Your marriage won't work. It will not work. I guarantee that. Also, if you have had, for example, a function where there is a mixed gathering of male and female mixing and dining and whining, and everything haram happening. In that case, we are celebrating half of our iman. Let's think how we have just did that. We need to engage in tawbah, some of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. Some who are already married have already done that. Now do you know why you had problems in your marriage? May Allah protect us. Because the seed when it was sown, you, you watered it with urine. May Allah protect us. And that is a very strict statement. It's very harsh, but it's a reality. Believe me, it makes us boil when we think of how people will please shaitan. May Allah not make us from that. And they won't listen to any of the ulama. They won't understand. Shaitan wants to contaminate you from the very celebration of half of your iman. That is why you'd rather not have the function if you would like to have it in a manner that will please shaitan. Feed two people at your house, that is enough. Feed the poor in an orphanage, that is enough. But if you would like to have gatherings where everyone besides Allah is going to be happy, only shaitan will be worshipped, then that is not the way to celebrate half of your iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors for us. Marriage is one of the most important things everybody looks towards and looks forward to from a very early age. And this is why it is a reality. We need to discuss it and we need to spend our time in this regard. I think every single one of us, if ever we are getting married or we know of someone getting married or one of our children is getting married, let us instruct them and let us try and teach them to have that function or that party totally separated gathering within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we are in the masjid, we are totally separated. That is also an act of worship which is celebrating half of your iman. We lose it and we think it's a party. Immediately after the party, they go on honeymoon, they come back separated. May Allah protect us all. It is increasing because most people, even the most religious of people, when it comes to their functions, sometimes what they do, they compromise what is right and wrong. And if that is the case, how are we going to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We want children, we want offspring. The seed we sowed from day one was already wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us. This is why the nikah, the sunnah is to have it in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is the most blessed of places. It is the, not the house of the president, nor the most expensive house around. MashaAllah, on the day of happiness, yes, we are allowed to be happy. We wear new clothes and we wear this and we wear that. For the brides, the message is never ever wear something that will reveal your body the day you are going for that function because that body is a gift for your husband and not for the rest of humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then the next day when you attend another function and there is another bride whom your husband sees with even a better body because it is revealed, don't blame anyone besides yourself when he turns in that direction. May Allah protect us. So these are statements that require digestion. They are solid, they are serious, and they are common sense. Really, they are instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marriage is a gift. It is a holy union. It is a noble coming together of two individuals to increase the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to treat it like an act of worship, I think, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our eyes open and may He forgive our shortcomings. Remember, if you've erred in the past already, I see the gloomy faces once again looking at me. May Allah protect us all. We need to engage in tawbah and istighfar. Allah is most forgiving. Allah, I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, most merciful. But we will not promote vice. And we will never ever swallow words of justice when we have to utter them just to please people. Another thing I'd like to bear in mind and, and I'd like everybody to bear it in mind is that it is prohibited for us to attend a function where haram is going to happen even if it is the nikah of your own father or brother or son or sister or uncle or aunt. You will not attend in order not to be from amongst those who have made shaitan happy when someone is supposed to be celebrating half of their iman. And it is about time the ulama of this ummah 
decide to abstain and boycott all those functions of walima where there is a mixed gathering. Let us not attend where there is a small cubicle in the corner only for ulama. Are the ulama the only males of the ummah? Just because they have beards and the rest of them are females? May Allah protect us all. No. That is an insult. To have a cubicle in a corner is like a commentary box when we are commentating for cricket. Really. Then they want us to give commentary from there in a corner to say, please give a lecture. Wallahi, it's better we don't attend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Because that is a celebration of half of Iman. How can the ulama bless a celebration of half of Iman being watered down by shaitan's water? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. We have every reason to cry. Wallahi, the ummah is degenerating into chaos. Because our children are so unruly. Because the day we got married, we never thought of the fact that we are marrying for children. We just got happy and trigger happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And if the ulama do not do something about this, we will never ever see a solution to this. Really. And we need to do something about it. Sometimes I've heard people saying, no, what are we going to do? You know, there's a little corner for us. That is not good enough, inshallah. If we've done it in the past, may Allah forgive myself and yourselves as well. But we will not repeat it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't we want a good ummah? Don't you want good children? Don't you want happiness? Don't you want the truth? Then why do you want to compromise it by one function that is going to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about the days when it is prohibited to consummate or to be intimate. The times and the seasons when it is prohibited to consummate and to be intimate. We are in Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says during the nights of Ramadan, yes it is permissible. You, you are permitted to be intimate during the nights of Ramadan. But during fasting, during the daylight, it is prohibited. You abstain from food, drink and permissible sexual desires. We are saying permissible because that which is prohibited is prohibited inside and outside Ramadan. But even that which is permissible for that moment, you abstain from it. So that you can appreciate it when it becomes permissible once again. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us appreciate our spouses. And to keep us with blinkers such that we look only in one direction. And our eyes do not wander left and right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about that in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the eves or the nights in Ramadan, you are permitted to be intimate with your spouses. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. During Hajj, also it is prohibited. Allah says, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجَّ Whomsoever Hajj is incumbent upon or compulsory upon, they go for Hajj. From the moment you don your Ihram, that is the two pieces of cloth, right up to the time you make your Tawaf al-Ziyara for the Hajj itself, or right up to the time you come out of Ihram for the case of Umrah, in that particular time, you are not allowed to be intimate with your spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Another point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about is the menstrual cycle. Whilst a woman is on her menstrual cycle, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ you are allowed to do absolutely anything you want with your spouses during the menstrual cycle besides the act of intercourse, besides being intimate with them. You are not, al you are not allowed to be intimate with your spouse whilst she is in the menstrual cycle during that particular period. It is prohibited and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us in this regard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to live with goodness with your spouse. Listen to what Allah says, especially about the women folk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Live with them with total goodness. Live with them in a nice manner, in a polite manner. Live with your wives in a beautiful manner. And Allah says, you might dislike one or two things. You don't have to divorce because you don't like one or two things. If you don't like one or two things, there are another 50 things that are good, that might even come out of the same one or two bad. May Allah protect us. 
You might not like, for example, the way she looks so much, but the way she looks after your children and the way she brings them up and what she teaches them and the time she spends with them, your children may be the coolness of your eyes. You did not realize it came to you through the same wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And this is why immediately after telling us to be very polite and very good to our wives, and for the wives, obviously to the husbands as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you dislike them, you might be disliking one thing, but Allah will create a lot of goodness even through the same thing. So when you dislike one thing, two things, five things, if you were to divorce your spouse because of five things that you didn't like, she might have had 500 things that were good that you won't realize except after the divorce. And you might get to someone else who might have 10 things that are wrong with her. Or she might have five things that are wrong with her which are even greater and which are more serious than those other five. Or she might even have just one thing. And the same applies to the females. Any small thing, I want to divorce, I want out. Anything I want out because the man looked at you and his eyes were a little bit red and he seemed to be angry. No, I'm going home. Allahu Akbar. If that's the case, how are we going to work? Didn't I tell you at the beginning of this talk that marriage is a sacrifice? No room for laziness. You have to learn to sacrifice in marriage. A woman sacrifices almost her identity. Allahu Akbar. She gives up her house. She gives up her home. She gives up her family. She gives up her brothers and sisters. She travels. She gives up her whole lifestyle. She comes into your home, into your custody. She obviously misses her mother, her father. She misses her parents. How dare you keep her away from everybody? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection inshallah. Yes, if they are dangerous and they are bad and they are an evil influence, you need to talk to her and convince her and you need to realize and understand she then herself will minimize it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us dictators in the home who are ruling with an iron fist such that when people look at us, they feel so scared and worried. The marital home is not supposed to be a home of dictatorship. It is supposed to be a home of comfort and solace, a home of peace and tranquility. A home of understanding and tolerance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us stand up for our responsibilities inshallah. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you dislike one or two things, concentrate on the other matters that you love and you like. You might want to think my husband, he might be this way and that way, or he might not be able to speak to me with a soft tone, but he reads his salah five times and he is a truthful, upright person. Allahu Akbar. That should be a reason for you to stay inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an opening. I have not yet crossed a quarter of the verses that I have written. And I'm noticing that the hour is almost up. And therefore, inshallah, we will continue a part two of this particular subject tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeing that it is such an important subject, we need to learn, we need to teach, and we need to put into practice as well. We all want happiness. The answer is in the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will never ever be able to achieve happiness until and unless we surrender to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger have taught. Because if that is not the case, we will not be able to arrive at what is known as happiness. It might just be short term explosion of, of happiness, but it will not be a real meaningful bliss in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness until we meet again tomorrow with the remainder of this subject. We say, wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahu bihamdih, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And all the messengers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to mankind To remove them from darkness to light we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all who are seated here this evening, to bless every single one of us who will be listening, 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all goodness and our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast inshallah, and may He keep us on the right path. Amin. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, as I had promised, we will be continuing with the topic of marriage that we had commenced yesterday because it is a very serious topic and we would love and we would like to see happier homes across the globe. We need to know what we are taught by the creator of myself and yourselves as well as the creator of entire creation regarding how we should be living inshallah. We had mentioned many points yesterday. I am not going to go back through them. We spoke for almost an hour. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the words we've uttered and to let them ring in our ears so that whenever we have a problem or whenever we have even a day of happiness, we will be able to bear in mind the decree of the Creator inshallah. The issue that I'm going to commence with this evening is the issue of problems and difficulty in marriage. It is normal and natural that two people who are brought up in totally different homes with totally different likes and dislikes, sometimes with entire different schools they've went to and different communities they've lived in, it is only normal and natural that they have at times differences. And these differences are not unnatural. They are something that really we should understand, we need to prepare for and keep ourselves equipped. A winner is the one who knows how to handle difference of opinion. The first rule, the golden rule, always listen. That is why it is reported that you have two ears and one mouth. We would have had two mouths and one set of ears, or should I say, it doesn't even want to come out of my mouth to be honest with you. One ear, it's impossible to have had that. Allahu Akbar. We need to listen more than we actually speak. Alhamdulillah. And let's listen to the opinion of our own spouses, our children, our parents, our in-laws. At least lend them an ear. Listen to what they are trying to say. If they come up with something better than what you have, which is closer to what the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies in, then definitely give up your opinion and surrender to theirs. It is not a match where, it is a, where people think that it is my view or I will definitely not surrender. No. They say my way or highway. We don't want to listen to that type of statement inshallah. We want to listen to what others have to say. We want to listen to their views and at the same time where it is reasonable, where it is understandable. Alhamdulillah, be broad minded and at the same time be tolerant for as long as it does not earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. Now when there is a problem or a dispute between husband and wife, the first step the Qur'an speaks about in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it is important that the two of them open the doors of communication and communicate with one another as to what is the problem. Yesterday we spoke about the importance of communication in marriage. And I remember very clearly mentioning that it is very important to have an open relation between husband and wife. You need to be able to speak Sometimes one of the two might be more jocular than the other. Adjust to the other, inshallah. Sometimes one of the spouses likes to joke a little bit more than the other and the other gets offended. That's not good enough. Try to understand the other. Let the doors of communication be open, inshallah. If there is a matter, a problem, you have faced a difficulty, you have an issue you'd like to address, address it as soon as possible. Don't leave it for the next day because that is detrimental. In the evening what happens? It hibernates and it grows and it multiplies. By the time the morning comes, the problem is double fold or triple fold Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so that is why it is important we speak and we speak with respect without using abusive words without using vulgar language we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in surah an-nisa wa in imra'atun khafat min ba'liha nushuzan aw i'radan fala junaha alayhima an yusliha baynahuma sulha was sulhu khair wa uhdiratil anfusu shuh wa in tuhsinu wa tattaqu fa in Allah kana bima ta'maluna khabira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
When a woman is fearing that her husband may become evil or is being bad and so on, at the time of a dispute where you find the man is turning away from you, then it is best to arrive at a solution between the two of you. Resolve it in one way or another. There are certain details mentioned in these verses which I'm not going to go into. But the crux and the message we need to take back is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is better for you to resolve your matters between the two of you. And we went through quite a bit yesterday. I told you I'm not going to repeat it, but let me say one word inshallah, that it is very, very important that we understand one another and put ourselves in each other's shoes. Last night someone came to me after I said that and told me my wife wears high heels. If I go into her shoes, I'll probably drop. Allahu Akbar. The reality is, that is on a lighter note. We know what is meant by this, that we need to try and look at it from their angle and see what they are trying to say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to resolve our matters. Remember one thing, never ever discuss your marital problems with the public because tomorrow you will solve your problem and the whole public will be talking about how you are not getting on with your spouse. They won't know that the problem is solved. A fool is the one who can discuss his own problems of the house with the general public. Sometimes even your closest friends do not need to know what is going on in your own house. Because they will not know how to handle that news and information. Sometimes people are waiting for you to have a problem. And then when you tell them, they start saying, Alhamdulillah, may Allah protect us. Those are hypocrites. Those are not proper Muslims. Sometimes people are happy at your loss and they are sad at your gain. So therefore, keep your happiness and your sadness within your home, inshallah. If you'd like to share happiness with those who are genuine, alhamdulillah. But as for sadness, even those who are genuine, keep them out of the picture initially as per the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Resolve it between the two of you directly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us do that. Remember one thing, let's not be petty in our marriages. Some small item, a small little thing, possibly a little mistake and so on, that might have repeated itself once or twice. Don't become petty. Learn to forgive and forget. Forgiveness begins at home. We know the English saying, charity begins at home. But it does not end at home as well. You know, that just came to my mind now. Inshallah, I will get to that. But to start with, when we say charity begins at home, you'd like to smile, start smiling at home first. You'd like to be good, you'd like to forgive, start forgiving at home first. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. And don't misinterpret that saying as though it would now mean that I need to be good only in the house and the rest of the places I don't have to be good. Or I should help only within my closed circle and I should not broaden the circle. No, then slowly but surely the circle should then become bigger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be good to absolutely everyone inshallah as far as possible. Then if the matter is still not resolved, sometimes it's a bigger problem. It is something that the two of them cannot solve themselves because of some reason. Allah says in the Quran, and I've just read the verse before you, A simple translation of that is man pulls towards himself all the time. Man is very miserly when it comes towards his own things. Quite stingy, if I can use that word. Shuh is the highest level of stinginess. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When it comes to you and someone else, you are always right and they are always wrong. That is the general nature of man. So the winner is the one who can look at the other side and learn to say, look, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, and really I won't, I won't repeat that again. So what if you have to say that once, twice, three times, so long as the problem is resolved and it's your own spouse, subhanallah, your own children, your own parents, what's wrong with that? Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. If the problem is not resolved, we are allowed to take it further. How can we take it further? Now, say for example, if a man has a wife who doesn't listen at all, who really doesn't want to fulfill her role, who doesn't want to understand anything at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such women. We spoke about that yesterday where we said, it is not a competition who is more powerful in the home. That's not the competition. The competition is who can fulfill the role better than the other. Allahu Akbar. Be a good mother in the house. Be a good father in the house. Let the father not try to be the mother in the home. The decisions of what formula to feed the children, let it be the mothers inshallah. That department, leave it for her. Let her go and try and find out. Unless obviously the husband is a pediatrician. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And thereafter, there are other decisions you need to leave for the males. Let them be the males of the home. It is not a bout or a battle. Allahu Akbar. It is some competition with one another in order to see who fulfills their role better and not who is more dominating and more powerful. Believe me, when you fulfill your role in the correct manner, you will be able to succeed both in this world as well as in the life after death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells the man that if you'd like, what you could do to resolve the problem is show a slight bit of disinterest. Maybe you can turn away slightly. Not so much that it will compound the problem, but you need to employ your intellect. And this is why Allah gives us options. And Allah says, look, there are three, four things that you could do. Employ that which is the most effective in your house. Sometimes if you turn away a little bit, she might turn away completely. So that shows who dominates. May Allah protect us all. But if you were, for example, maybe not to speak as much as you did, possibly not to smile, making it clear what the problem is. Not just arrive at home and suddenly you stop talking. No one knows. You know, Jibreel alayhi salam stopped coming. He doesn't come to us anymore. We are not prophets. Don't expect revelation from the heavens to drop down to tell them what is the problem. You need to speak, communicate. Say, look, this is the issue. I'm not very happy about it. And you know, we'd like to see what we can do about it. Try and resolve it. If it's not yet resolved, at least they would know why you are upset. A day is more than enough. One simple action which shows disinterest is enough for a female who has a brain, inshallah, and for a male as well who has a brain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if that still does not help, you may decide to sleep on the couch. Really, sleeping on the couch is a term that we use. Yes, we understand what that means is you turn away in the bedding. You might want to face the other direction. Allahu Akbar. You might want to sleep, for example, in another set of bedding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and never let us be from amongst those whose problems even get to that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us resolve our marital problems. For those who have problems, believe me, these auspicious nights of the month of Ramadan, they are no coincidence that we are discussing this. It is a plan from Allah directed at every single person who is listening. Subhanallah. If this message has got to you, it was created for your ears. It was not meant to miss you. Ma asabaka lam yakul That which got to your ears or that which got to you in any way was never ever meant to miss you. Allah planned it to get to your ears or to get to you if it is sustenance. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and to guide us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a term that a lot of the people in this world have misunderstood. He says, and this is a very, very powerful term, and I hope we understand and listen to it very carefully because we don't want any misunderstanding. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those whom you fear that they have now turned away or they have become unruly, they are misbehaving from your spouses, meaning from your wives, or they are evil or they have some bad characteristics in them, you should employ the most effective method to resolve the matter and the problem. You may want to, for ex I see some are actually smiling at me, they are wondering what I'm about to say. Allahu Akbar. Those who understand the Arabic language are waiting for the translation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. You may want to address her directly to give a warning, that is one. And you may want to separate the bedding, that is two. And you may want to tap her. Allahu Akbar. The term darb, daraba does not mean to beat. It does not mean to beat. Many Qur'ans, you open them and they will tell you to beat her. That is a wrong translation. Let me give you evidence to prove what I'm saying. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum never ever beat their wives. They used a siwak. Siwak is a small stick like a toothbrush. And they tapped a woman who didn't want to look in their direction to even listen to what the problem is, to draw her attention. That is how they interpreted this, number one. Number two is the term darb is used in tayammum. That you should do darb upon the earth. Darb does not mean to beat. It means to tap the earth. If daraba meant only to beat, 
then that would mean when we are doing tayammum, we would have to slap the earth until our hands go red. Allahu Akbar. So remember one thing, if daraba, when it comes to tayammum, it does not mean to beat, but it rather means just to put your hand on, then you should remember women are more delicate than the earth and the soil. Allahu Akbar. Another point of evidence to prove that physical abuse is haram in Islam is that a woman has the right to seek nullification of her marriage if she is beaten up and thoroughly abused physically. Why would she be allowed to apply for a nullification if beating was permissible? Common sense, Allahu Akbar. And this is where the kuffar, the enemies of Islam, those who have little knowledge of Islam, those who surf the net to get the knowledge of Islam, those who answer the questions that creep up whilst they are reading the translation of the Quran themselves. For them, they don't know, they don't understand, either intentionally or unintentionally. They don't realize that in the Arabic language, when one word is used, it sometimes has more than 35 different meanings. Subhana Rabbi al -Ala. We need to look at how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum interpreted that verse and what they did as a result. And we need to look at all the different terminologies and remember something, if you are to beat your wife nowadays, she might get up and beat you even more thoroughly. Allahu Akbar. So be careful. How many people we have that are complaining about husband bashing? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is true. You find a man coming for Fajr Salah. Very, very early, automatically, you know, there's a problem. Then suddenly, you see a blue scar on the top of his head. And then you think to, for a moment that that is a sign of the sujood that he has been engaged in all night. But it is not, subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So beating is something that really is a wrong word to use. Because nowadays, when you say beat up your wife, it is criminal behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand, may he make us understand. That having been said, we will never delete that word darb from the Qur'an. We believe it, we understand it, and we know that we should be drawing the attention of the women folk. Whenever sometimes out of the nature of a woman, she just sulks and sobs and looks in the other direction, you may want to then draw her attention with a little bit of energy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So that is the verse and I, that is what I wanted to mention regarding this particular verse to clarify a misconception which is in a lot of people's minds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And again, there is no need to be frightened of that verse. There is no need to delete it. In fact, if one thinks for a moment that there is something wrong with it, they may be just losing their iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The Quran has no loopholes in it and it does not have anything oppressive in it. It is full of peace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look what else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. If you tried that as well and the problem did not resolve or you were unable to come to a solution, then you employ one member of your family who is senior, who is respectable, reputable, and let her employ one member of her family who is respectable and reputable, one representative from either side, inshallah, the two of them must be told exactly what the problem is. They, the two representatives must sit together and arrive at a solution and impose it on these two, on the husband and wife, subhanallah. Because sometimes what happens, you come with something very reasonable for one of the two spouses and they say, no, I'm not prepared to listen. No, that's it. No, that's final. No, I'm going home. No, this. No, that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا If you are now fearing a split between the two of them, then before you allow them to actually split, you need to employ another method. Notice how the Qur'an has not spoken about divorce immediately. It speaks about resolving it one way, then another way, then go to another level and a different level. And it shows that all marriages have at least a little bit of turbulence. Sometimes your boat will rock very slightly. Sometimes you might find a hole in the boat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, really. So Allah says, فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا Appoint one representative from his family who is reputable, respectable. One representative from her family who is reputable, respectable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, <laughs> If the two of them are really interested in resolving the matter, then Allah will help them to resolve it. 
And this brings us to a powerful point of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is telling us that when you have a problem, if your intention is to solve it, you will be able to solve it. But if your intention is to prove who was right and who was wrong, you are not going to solve your problem. You will end up proving who was right and wrong, maybe, without solving the problem. Remember, when you are married, when you are living together, there is no point in trying to find out who was right and who was wrong sometimes. Sometimes you just need to help resolve, solve the matter, start a new leaf, turn a new chapter, begin on a clean slate inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us achieve that. So Allah says, if you really intend to resolve the matters, then you will be able to resolve them inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us genuine. Those who might have problems, if you are listening tonight, remember one thing, open your heart and ask yourself, am I just trying to prove who was right and who was wrong? Subhanallah. We once had a bit of a problem with a couple. And Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, after explaining to them that you are not supposed to be trying to look at who was right and who was wrong here, turn a new leaf and stop discussing the past. Because if you bring back past issues, what happens is you will go back to square one. So mashallah, they both agreed. Husband and wife were both walking out, mashallah. And as they were walking out, wife says, you see, I knew I was always right. And the problem started, they had to turn back and come back for counseling once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. Really, there is no point in going back to square one. Let us try and sit and think. Do we want to solve? Do we want to help? Especially subhanallah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept you with such goodness, with so much blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have children, we have offspring, we have in-laws, we have relatives by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we want to mess it up overnight? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and may He grant us an opening. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that definitely Allah is high. The two people, if they still cannot resolve the problem, there are two people from either party, one person from each party, if they still cannot come up with a solution, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now I will have mercy on you. I won't force you to live in that situation. You may now come out of that marriage, Allahu Akbar, because you've tried everything. You've left no stone unturned. Now it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has shown you a way out without oppressing the other party. زَوِّجِ ابْنَتَكَ تَقِيًّا إِنْ أَحَبَّهَا أَكْرَمَهَا وَإِنْ أَبْغَضَهَا لَمْ يَظْلِمْهَا Get your daughters married to people who are conscious of Allah. If they love them, they will honor them. If they do not love them for some reason and there is a problem, they will send them home in one piece without oppressing them. It is a blessing and a gift. When a female has been sent home without being beaten and broken her bones, without being oppressed, the man fears Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us resolve our matters. May it not get to that. Today, for the smallest of issues, I know of an incident and a true incident and I'm going to say it here even if those involved happen to be listening. Where there was a woman, a bride who could not pass the salad to the groom on the occasion of the walima. And he issued the word talaq immediately in front of everyone. Allahu Akbar. And he divorced his wife. He told her, if you can't pass me the salad here now, what are you going to do for me later on? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Such people are definitely the comrades of shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That is not how you play with the laws of Allah. That is a very sacred word. You do not utter it. And you need to know something that is very, very important. And that is, it is farad and compulsory upon every one of us to learn the laws of divorce before we marry. If you are married and you don't know the laws of divorce, you better know them tonight before tomorrow morning. Because it is foolish to have a gun and you don't know what the trigger is all about. Allahu Akbar. So many people own guns, they don't know what the trigger is all about. So they face it squarely to their forehead and they fire. They fire two, three shots, then they say, you know what, I didn't know what the trigger was all about. Allahu Akbar. You want to marry without knowing the laws of divorce? You are a fool. You will crack your skull into 10 pieces. Then you want to come to the ulama and ask for help. Why didn't you find out what that trigger was all about? Allahu Akbar. So we need to realize, when we come to weddings, the ulama are invited to give talks, mashallah. They cannot talk about divorce on the occasion of marriage because that will spell doom for those who are getting together. They will say, I'm never going to call this alim again. Allahu Akbar. He wants to talk about divorce when we are getting married. But the reality is, we need to know the laws of divorce before we marry. 
before you drive your car, you need a license. You can't just have a car, jump into it and not know what the red traffic light is all about. Allahu Akbar. That's what we are doing every time youngsters are getting married. It is our duty to take the rules of divorce in a booklet form or CD form and give it to them and say, Brother, before you even go there, please read this because you might terminate your marriage and you don't even know. Thalathun jidduhunna jiddun wa hasluhunna jiddun. There are three things. When you are joking about them, they occur. And when you are being serious about them, they still occur. They have nothing to do with your underlying intention. Even if you are joking, when you are joking about nikah, you will get married. When you are joking about talaq, you will be divorced. When you are joking about freeing a slave, the slave will be free. These are the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't ever joke about divorce because it is actually valid and it will occur. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. In the same way that you don't joke with a live ammunition by facing it to people. You never ever do that. Not even jokingly. Because you might pull the trigger by mistake and then you've had it. The same applies to these laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the laws of Allah. They are sacred laws. You do not threaten a female to say, I'll divorce you, I'll divorce you. Tomorrow you're going home and the following day you might and you will this and that may happen and this. You don't use that as a threat. You either resolve your problems or you send her home in one piece. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection and understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that if you really have to divorce, how do you divorce? You issue one talaq, just one, only one. And you make sure you ask the ulama before you utter any words or before you write anything. You make sure you utter one. And you utter one in a condition where the woman has been cleansed after a menstrual cycle and you have not touched her after that. In terms of you have not been intimate with her after the last menstrual cycle, then you issue her with one talaq. And that will be an irrevo sorry, a revocable talaq known as raj'i. You will then have the chance to take it back. Or if a period of three menstrual cycles passes after that and you have not yet taken her back, in that particular case, she is now no longer your wife. She is free to marry someone else or she is free to also get back to you in the new nikah because you only issued one talaq, you did not issue a second or a third. So you would be allowed to take her back. If you took her back for the second time, then what happened is, say for example, within that period of three months, you took her back. You had another problem. You sent her home again. You issued her with another talaq. Then within the, within the three menstrual cycles, you took her back again. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's the last time you can take her back. Now if you are to give her a third talaq, then you are not allowed to get back to her again because now it doesn't make sense for her to keep on trying with you. Twice is enough. Allah says in the Quran, Divorce is twice. After that, you will have to make up your mind. You either keep her with goodness or you release her with goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to us. And it's amazing how powerful that law is because after you have now issued the third talaq, after trying twice properly, when you issue the third one, she can no longer marry you until and unless she has without your interference married someone else and naturally normally could not get on with him. Now if she is divorced from that second person, naturally she might have been comparing while she was there. She might have now understood and realized now it would make sense for her if she came back to you with a totally new concept of what marriage is all about, appreciating who you are. So now she can come back. It is not just an old folk law which says if you divorce a woman, she must first marry someone else before she can get back to you. That is a foolish understanding. It is a deep Islamic well-rooted foundation that is definitely from the Creator Himself. He says you divorce her with one talaq. This business of a person issuing three talaqs is extremely dangerous. It is like a person who comes up and has three bullets and fires them all at once and then tells you, look, I didn't mean it, Allahu Akbar. Then they want to go to the ulama to find out now what is the story here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us all understanding. You never issue three, you only ever utter one. Three is out of the question. 
A lot of us when we are young, we hear the words, talaq, talaq, talaq. Wallahi, those words are dangerous. That's not how you divorce a woman. That is more filthier than an animal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really. You've lived with someone, you married them, you took them with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you release them even in a way that dogs wouldn't release their own opposite sex? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, then we want to come and cry and do this and do that. Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. You release her with one, you try to resolve. If you happen to resolve, alhamdulillah, let her get back. If then second time it happens and the problem repeats itself or a new problem and she goes away with another talaq and you happen to bring her back even the second time, the third talaq that is issued now renders that talaq mughallad, which means it, it arrives at a high level. It is a serious solemn talaq. You can't get back to her just like that. Let her now carry on in her life. Allahu Akbar. If somewhere down the line, and it is very rare for this to happen, that she would then get married and then she would be divorced once again from that man as well. Now she has an option together with you to say, do you know what? If we'd like to get back, I really appreciate, I understand and so on. And now I can compare its chalk and cheese and what have you. Now you can get back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, when you are divorced properly, He says, don't engage in mudslinging. Nobody must start saying, you know, she was like this and she was like that. And you know, he did this and he did that and he was like this. If that is what you are going to do, your future in your life is going to be a disaster. That is Allah's instruction or Allah has said that that is what will happen. If you are engaging in mudslinging after you have after you have been divorced or after you have divorced, then definitely you are not a good Muslim because a true Muslim, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al Talaq three times, fear Allah, fear Allah when it comes to talking about the spouse who is divorced or who has been divorced. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect us. And Allah says, if you are going to be conscious of Allah, He will open your doors very quickly. Listen to what He says in Surah Al Talaq. If you are going to be conscious of Allah, you are going to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the divorce, Allah says, He will open the doors for you and He will show you an opening and grant you a spouse from a place that you hadn't ever dreamt of. And wallahi, that works. Allahu Akbar. Allah will get you married as soon as possible to someone even better on condition that after the talaq you are fearful of Allah, you are conscious, you don't utter bad words about the one who divorced you or the one whom you divorced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us understanding. Allah says He will sustain you and provide for you also a spouse and much more than a spouse from a position where you had never ever imagined. And Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, if as a last resort you have decided to divorce, Allah says that is a mercy from me. If it is the last resort and you have divorced following all the steps, then Allah says, I will grant both spouses who have now been divorced, I will grant them goodness because Allah has lots and lots of goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's goodness is not just closed to one of the two parties. If it didn't work, it didn't work. For your information, a lot of the Sahaba, if not majority of them, have also been through divorce. Majority of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been through divorce. But they were not shackled by culture like us. If the marriage didn't work, they sent the woman home with respect, with dignity. They still got on better than anything with that family. Allahu Akbar. And nobody bad mouthed anyone. There was one Sahabi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, who divorced a woman and went to his friend and said, Look, I didn't get along with her, but I think she would make a good wife for you. And then he married her. Allahu Akbar. And they were still friends. Those are the type of people we had. We have been overtaken by the Eastern 
culture whereby divorce is a crime. You need to punish the individual. You need to talk bad about them. You need to prove who was right and wrong. You need to keep the kids away from them. You need to do this and you need to really... All that is falling into the trap of shaitan. It will make your life a misery. Wallahi, if that is what you have done, tonight is the night to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to open the doors. Divorce is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, it might be the most detested of halal things, but it is still a way out. There are other religions who don't allow you to divorce. Once you are married, you can never ever part ways until death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant guidance to those who have been through divorce or who have divorced. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us abstain from mudslinging because wallahi, I swear by Allah, anyone who engages in mudslinging, they will pay for it before they die. Their life will be a misery. They will not taste goodness. They will never ever have happiness and bliss in their lives. Even if they want to lie to themselves that I am content only inside, they would know that I haven't tasted happiness since the time I messed my tongue speaking against her or speaking against him or punishing him or her with the the children and so on that is a grave test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divorce is an divorce is an action which opens the doors of new acts of worship Allahu Akbar the act of worship of being the act of worship of allowing either custody or access to the other spouse or to the divorced individual only comes into play after divorce so in the same way that nikah is an action or nikah is a union, marriage is a union that opens the doors for many other acts of worship such as looking after your family members or your relatives, the relatives have now increased and so on. There are many acts of worship that are now opened as a result of marriage. That is why it is called half of your faith. In the same way that that opens doors, divorce is also a very big test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only to see whether after the divorce you will fulfill those acts of worship that you did not have an opportunity to fulfill had you not gone through that divorce. That is a very powerful statement if you are to think about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors for every one of us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He will provide for both. He will provide for everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding. Also, what is prohibited according to the Quran is when a man takes a qasam and he says, I promise that I am never ever, or I swear by Allah that I am not going to be intimate with you. If he tells that to his wife and four months have passed, it is known as ilah. لِلَّذِينَ يُؤْلُونَ مِن نِسَائِهِمْ تَرَبُّصُ أَرْبَعَةِ أَشْهُرُ They have four months to break that promise. You cannot promise one whom you are married to. Taking an oath by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, I'm definitely not going to be intimate with you. If that is the case, why did you get married? If four months have passed, then she may seek to nullify that marriage with the ulama. Or in a, in a Muslim country, with the courts, with the Sharia courts, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. This does not mean that if the marriage has not been consummated for more than four months with the happiness of both parties or without this particular oath, then it's suddenly broken. It doesn't just break automatically, no. And if the two parties have not been intimate for a long, long time, if they both are okay with it, there's nothing wrong, the marriage is intact. But where a man comes after a problem or for whatever reason and swears by Allah that he is not going to be intimate with his wife, in that particular case, if four months have lapsed, she has the right to seek nullification of that particular marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. This brings me to yet another point. When a woman complains about the husband, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens and he responds and retaliates on her behalf. Listen to what he says. One day there was a woman who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, known as Al-Mujadila, the one who came to talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to try and tell him, to dispute, to say, look, my husband is being vulgar, he is doing this to me. He has told me that you and my mother are equal, so now you can go away. Allahu Akbar. You and my mother are equal. Allahu Akbar. What a statement that is known as Zihar. Zihar is a very, very dangerous statement in the Sharia. 
when you make your wife similar to a mahram of yours and you tell her, look, I am not interested. Now you can carry on. That is very dangerous. So she says, look, I gave birth to his children. I looked after him. He used me. Now when I'm old and now when I'm, uh, you know, bent and what have you, now he wants to throw me and discard me. And the Prophet ﷺ was in the process of comforting her and telling her that, okay, you know what, let's try and see what can be done and what have you and so on. And as she was walking away, verses were revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the whole surah is named after this lady, Al-Mujadila, the beginning of the 28th part of the Qur'an. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوْرَكُمَا Allahu Akbar. Allah says, Allah has heard the woman who came to you complaining about her husband and complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah just heard your discussion and here is the solution for your problem. Allahu Akbar. And the solution was presented. Doesn't this show us that when a woman complains about her husband, sometimes she doesn't have anyone to actually help her. Sometimes, believe me, it is impossible for counselors to believe that a man of that status and caliber can actually be, be that vulgar and physically abusive to his wife. Sometimes people who are purporting themselves to be so religious, they are vulgar to their wives, they don't respect them, they, they beat them up. They don't even count them as human beings. And then when that woman complains, people will say, but I think, you know, you might not be really being very accurate with me. May Allah protect us. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I listen, I hear, here is the solution. Allahu Akbar kabira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors for all of us. And may He not make us from amongst those who are punished by Him because of the way we treat our own offspring and our family members. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that whenever a person complains, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always listening. He is always taking a record. He always knows the solutions are always there. But that having been said, we need to realize and understand that when you oppress a woman who is supposed to be under your authority and under your guidance and guardianship, then who is going to help her if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't? This is why it is very, very dangerous to seek for a war with our Creator Himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And then after the talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are some talaqs that you cannot get back to this woman after you have divorced her in that way. And some types of divorce you can get back to her. I've explained that partly. I'm not going to go into great depth because of time. But that having been said, when you've issued one or two, you can still get back to her. The minute you've given a third one, you cannot get back to her until she gets to someone. And if she is naturally and normally without your interference, if she is one day divorced from, her, from him as well, she may want to consider if you are also considering getting back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors. Then there is one type of separation when you can never ever get back no matter what happens. And that is the separation after what is known as li'an. Li'an means when you accuse your wife of having slept with another man and you happen to take that accusation up to the courts of the Sharia or to the panel of ulama and you happen to swear an oath that you are telling the truth and you saw it with your eyes and she happens to swear an oath that you are telling a lie once she swears an oath that you are lying and you swore an oath that you are telling the truth the two of you are separated forever and ever and ever never to be able to get back again automatically just by that solemn oath so this does not occur when you just accuse may allah protect us when you accuse you are a very big sinner huge sinner because we are not allowed to accuse in the sharia you are only allowed to speak from knowledge when it comes to Sexual misbehavior, you are only allowed to speak from knowledge, what you have seen with your eyes. But you cannot just accuse people. If you have just accused someone, it is a major, major sin. But it will not dissolve and re the, the marriage. It will not separate the two. But when a person takes that up with the justice system in a Muslim country or with the panel of ulama in a non-Muslim country, in that particular case, the nikah will then be invalidated forever and ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then after the divorce, there is something known as an iddah. In the Quran, Allah makes mention of it very clearly. Iddah means the waiting period of a woman. When a woman is divorced, it, she needs to wait for a moment. She needs to wait for a period of three menstrual cycles to pass before she can get married to someone else. 
in order to protect her. That is why Allah has made that clear for her and that is why Allah has stipulated it for her. Many women think that, you know, let me tell you, why is Allah telling us we must sit and wait? Why can't I get married the very next day? The truth is, when a person is divorced, if they then get married the very next day, who will know whose child it is if that woman then gets pregnant later on or if she gives birth very soon? People might then start spreading rumor about her that you see she was impregnated by someone else so that's why the husband divorced. So protect her from that statement. Tell her, look, for three complete menstrual cycles you will remain without getting married and you will remain indoors as far as you can. You will only come out for dire necessity during daylight hours. Otherwise you must remain indoors and you must not make up, you must not wear clothing that, that will display joy because people must not start thinking that this woman is so happy. What would happen then is when she gets married, people will say, you know what, she broke her marriage because she wanted to get to someone else. To save you from that type of rumor which is very dangerous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wait for a minimum of three months, which means three menstrual cycles. For those who don't have menstrual cycles due to old age or menopause, the Quran says you must wait for three months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Also, it is not necessary nor is it Islamic to wear the color black in the period of Iddah. That color black is not a color of mourning in Islam. In Islam, you can wear whatever color you'd like, inshallah. For as long as it is respectable, reputable, I'm talking about the women folk, alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the cultures of the West. And the cultures that are un-Islamic, that have crept into us, people actually think that in Iddah, you must wear the color black. That is the color of mourning for the others, not for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And this Iddah is not a period of mourning. It is just a waiting period for your benefit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ that is the instruction of Allah. That a woman who is divorced must wait before she marries again for a period of three menstrual cycles. And that is not a long period of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all our women folk the ability to adopt the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only time you don't have to wait for that three month period is if you are marrying the same person whom you were divorced from in the case where he only issued one or two talaqs. Allahu Akbar. So if you are getting back to the same character, and I'm using the word character because if you've had such a big problem, he is no longer a man, he's a character. May Allah protect us all. If you're getting back to him, inshallah, what would happen is you would not have to wait for the end of that period. You would actually get back to him. If it is revocable, then there is no point in actually having a new nikah because you can get back. It's a revocable talaq. If it is irrevocable, then you would have to have a new nikah done. And in order to get to the details of this, you will have to go back to the books and you will have to learn the rules and the laws of talaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that a person who commits adultery, a very interesting verse, the opening verses of Surah An-Nur. This is mentioned in Surah An-Nur because a person who commits adultery, the nur is snatched away from their faces and from their, from their lives. The light is snatched away. So in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you pick up any translation into the English language, I've picked up quite a few and tried to look into them. The translation is not extremely accurate because the Arabic words have more than one meaning. The term nikah does not necessarily mean marriage. It also means the act of intercourse or intimacy. It is also referred to as nikah. So when the Quran says, Azani la yankihu, ma'nahu la yazni illa bizaniyatin aw mushrika. Azani la yazni illa biman hiya zaniyatan aw mushrika. A woman or a man who is committing adultery is not committing adultery with anyone besides a woman who is equally guilty of the crime of adultery. Because if she was not, it would be rape. 
If she was not, it would be rape. So the difference between the two is that when a man is imposing himself and the woman does not want it, then it is rape. Or vice versa, it would also be rape. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when both of them are in the crime, they are both equally guilty of it. And that is why the verse is there. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end, This act is haram upon the believers. Now some translations say that a, an adulterer will not marry a woman except if she is an adulteress or a mushrika. Or a, and that is not correct because many men who have committed adultery then go and marry women who are virgins. Allahu Akbar. They are innocent. That can happen. So it shows you that the translation of that verse is not accurate when it comes to the, the English translation of it. If you see the word marry, you must excuse the individual who translated that Quran and you can cross it out and write the term had sexual intercourse with or was intimate with. Those are the terms you would actually be able to substitute that word marry with. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. Then one might ask, so why is the term mushrika there? The term mushrika is there because Allah is telling you that when a person is committing adultery, he is only committing adultery with an adulteress who is equally guilty of the crime or a mushrika who does not even consider it haram. So she'll tell you, I'm not adultery. It's not adultery. That's my partner. Allahu Akbar. You can use the word partner or what have you. If you don't have a nikah, it is haram and it is adultery. So Allah says, when a person commits adultery, there are one of two people they are committing adultery with. Either someone who considers it prohibited, but is equally guilty of the crime, she would then be an adulteress. Or a person who is a mushrika, who does not believe in the deen, who considers nothing wrong with it, and is also in, involved in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And really we need to understand this. This is something that many people have failed to understand because we have not gone into the books of tafsir and looked into reasons of revelation and seen deep what the sahaba radiallahu anhum have understood. And this brings me back to that initial point I raised at the beginning of this talk about daraba yadribu. It does not only mean to beat, it could mean to strike, it could mean to tap. Just like when you are making your tayammum or when you are striking the earth, some say you strike it, some say you tap it, some say you touch it, and alhamdulillah all of it will get you to that tayammum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and understanding. Now, as you can see, it seems like this topic is so important, we have still not completed it and inshallah we will continue it tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a few interesting examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. I think towards the end of Ramadan, let's end inshallah on a note whereby we will really have taken some food for thought outside the month of Ramadan. Before I end tonight, and inshallah I will just close for now with a promise inshallah that tomorrow we will continue part three of this topic of marriage inshallah. Before I end, I'd like to remind you of one thing I told you at the beginning of Ramadan, and that is, when Ramadan ends, a lot of us become the bad people we were before Ramadan. No. I want to give you that example of the computer. When you've worked on the computer for one whole month, or for three hours, or for four hours, and you've saved, or for example, you've worked on WordPad, or what have you, for a long, long time, and then suddenly, you close the computer down, and you forgot to save changes. What happens? You really feel so upset with yourself that I worked so hard, I did so much, and now I'm out. I'm going to have to start again from where I was, and I'm, I'm going to have to really rewrite and redo everything that I've had. Now, the month of Ramadan is here. We are all on a higher spiritual level. Wallahi, believe me, to be sitting in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time of the night, to be listening to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a naturally understood, very easily understood that this person is now on a higher level spiritually. But when we exit the month of Ramadan, we forget to save changes. So what happens? The computer shuts down and we are back to where we were before Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. We need to wait now for the next Ramadan before we can get back. This Ramadan, inshallah, think carefully. Before you move further, save your changes every few minutes. Every day save changes, inshallah. You click it. If you want to know, the icon is on the left-hand corner at the top, inshallah. You save, you press save and inshallah it will help you. So we press save every day inshallah. So until we meet again tomorrow, let's save what we uttered today. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of us acceptance And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect every single one of us to grant us protection from the devil and from evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, as we had promised, we will be continuing with the last segment and section of this particular topic of marriage. It is a very, very important topic. In fact, the response I have got via email is immense and intense. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. It shows how many difficulties and problems people are going through and how much misunderstanding shaitan has allowed to creep in, especially between husband and wife. Remember, try your best never to allow a difference of opinion to creep in when it comes to your marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Try to be on best behavior at all times because that is what will definitely enhance and promote a happy home, happy generations to follow, inshallah. Also, we need to realize that shaitan, the devil, Satan, one of the prime aims, one of the biggest plans he has is to, differenti- is to differentiate or to cause a split between husband and wife. And this is why he goes to get his prize after he has split between husband and wife. And he is awarded a huge and handsome reward by his leader, Iblis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. That having been said, we also need to realize and understand that we spoke about appointing certain representatives from either side when there is a problem and the problem cannot be resolved by the two of them. We need to know that sometimes, yes, Family members at times are not qualified enough or their hearts are not clean enough to be able to help you. Sometimes family members themselves create the problem because they have something against the other party. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors of understanding. And this is why it is important that when we select a representative, the Quran says, min ahliha or from his family or from her family, either party. Together with that, let us select those who have intellect, who have experience, who have a genuine feeling and not someone who is going to tell you break the marriage. If there is anyone who tells you just break the marriage, they are not genuine. You need to try and try again and try a third time and try as hard as you can before you even discuss the issue of splitting and separating. And each time you go to a new counselor, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to go to those who have sound knowledge of the sharia together with experience. You need to know you are going to have to start all over again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the heart to turn a new leaf and to forgive those who are our own spouses and to try as hard as we can. Then obviously we mention the fact of divorce being a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times to get you out of a situation and to get you out of oppression and to get you out of that which might result in your mental downfall as well as emotional. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. It is also important that we realize that really nowadays we have a very, very great proportion or ratio of people who go through divorce. Very great. But the reason why they go through divorce is sometimes very basic, very small, a minor issue. Something very small, they allow it to grow and to blow out of proportion. This is why it is important to resolve a matter as soon as it starts. When a fire starts, you would be very intelligent if you actually extinguished it as soon as possible rather than to wait for the whole house to catch and then you want to bring the dowser to come and now extinguish it even if you bring the whole fire brigade they won't succeed your house will be burnt when you see a small spark 
immediately try and resolve it instead of waiting for the whole house to catch fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This evening I have chosen to go through three very important examples in the Quran and really they are so deep and so beautiful and they show to us the beauty of marriage, the beauty of our spouses and the beauty of the life when we are together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. The first example is that in Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm sure many of us know the verses of by heart. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a husband and a wife. Allah says, They are like clothing unto you, O men, and the men are like clothing unto you, the wives. So the wives are like clothing unto their husbands, and the husbands are like clothing unto their wives. It might seem a very light verse when you skip, when you like whip through it as you are reading the Quran. But believe me, today, if Allah grants us the acceptance, you will see the depth or some of the depth of this particular verse. What is clothing? Clothing beautifies you. That is the first quality of the spouse. They are meant to take the good out of you, inshallah, which means expose the good in you, inshallah. And they are meant to beautify you and they are meant to give a good image of you, inshallah. You will not wear clothing that is that of disgrace. The same applies, your spouse is not meant to disgrace you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the first understanding. Thereafter, your clothing changes with the changing of the season. In the cold weather, you will wear warm. And in the hot weather, you will wear a little bit cool. This shows us the reason for this is to protect you from outside environment. Your spouse is supposed to protect you from outside environment. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was faced with Jibreel and revelation for the first time, he felt quite heavy and he rushed down to his wife Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiallahu anha saying, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me, cover me. And his wife comforted him to the highest degree, that is also the term clothing, subhanallah. Providing comfort, providing warmth when warmth is needed, and providing the cool breeze when it is needed, alhamdulillah. So clothing also changes with the changing of time, and it fits into the situation. A person who is wearing hot clothing on a, on a hot day will not like that clothing. They would sweat and perspire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and may He make us from those who can look into this example. Let's move further into the example. When it comes to clothing, if you have, for example, an operation where you have been medically operated on your belly or anywhere in your body, what would clothing do to you? It would cover the scars that you have. Allahu Akbar. Your spouse is meant to cover up for you and not to go and tell the whole world, you know, my wife is like this and my husband is like that. No. You are meant to cover up. You are meant to be clothing. Over and above that, clothing is there in order to cover your private parts and your shame, as it were. So your husband or your wife, you as a spouse are meant to be protecting them and you are meant to be looking after them and you are meant to be covering up wherever you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us promote the good and look at the good and concentrate on the good. Whereas when there is something negative, yes, we do know inside that there is something negative. But at the same time, it will not be exposed in public. Do not clean your linen in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Let's move further down that example. When you want to buy clothing, you first go to a shop that, your, that fits your pocket. You will not go to a shop where the cheapest clothing is 10,000 rands when your salary is only 500 rands. Which means when you are looking for a spouse, look for someone on your level. Look for someone on your level. Don't look for someone whom it is going to be so expensive to look after them. The marriage won't really work. May Allah protect us. Let me take the example further. When you walk into, say, for example, this store, what size do you buy? Do you buy your size or do you buy a bigger size or a smaller size? Even if you happen to weigh a little bit more, you will still buy clothing that is your size. Even if the clothing that is small and tight fitting looks very nice, maybe, if you were to buy that, it might look beautiful. Once you wear it, it will tear. Allahu Akbar. 
Look at that. So when you get someone who is not on your level of spirituality or on your social level, it might look nice, it might look beautiful. As soon as you get married, it tears. Allahu Akbar, may Allah protect us. The marriage won't last, it won't work because the hadith teaches us about kafa'a. Kafa'a meaning to look for someone in your social standing, to look for someone whose likes and dislikes will be similar, to look someone on your spiritual level, to look for someone who will not be a burden upon you in any way, and who will not be so low or so high that you will not be able to reach below or to reach above in order to reach them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So tight clothing, no one buys. If you are a size 10 and you were to buy a size 6, you would have to keep it in your cupboard and closet. You won't be able to benefit from it. May Allah protect us. And if you were, for example, to buy clothing that is too big, say for example, you are a 32 waist and you buy a trouser which is 38. Believe me, it will embarrass you in public. Allahu Akbar. You might need a belt to hold it up. And when it comes to marriage, we don't want to talk about a belt. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Look at how beautiful the example of clothing is. The most intimate relation you have, whether you know it or not, is with your clothing. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. That is the power of the Quran. We've only been through a segment of one verse. The power of the verse when Allah speaks about the spouse and Allah says, they are like clothing unto you and you are like clothing unto them. Now do we see that in that verse, he is teaching us how to select a spouse, how to marry the spouse and how to live with the spouse as well. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Let's move on to another verse. If we open the verses of the Quran in Surah, Al in Surah Fatir, we will find just before Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that He has created us in pairs. Listen to what He says. Wallahu khalaqakum min thumma It is Allah who has created you from dust or from sand or from soil and thereafter from the seed and thereafter he has made you pairs he has made you into pairs let's listen and concentrate he is telling us that he has made us male and female and then he is showing us immediately after that other creatures of his whom he has also made in pairs and he is drawing to our attention that nothing goes wrong in the other creatures because they go according to Allah's plan. And if you were to go according to Allah's plan, nothing would go wrong in your union as well. Subhanallah. Have you ever seen anything going wrong between the sun and the moon, between the night and the day and so on? Never ever because they listen to what Allah says to the T. The lesson is if you were to listen to what Allah says to the T, nothing would go wrong as well. And this is an example given in Surah Fatir. Many of us think that we will receive and achieve happiness by undressing in public or by uncovering our hair. If that is the case, it is like the sun saying that today I really want to fight this moon. I'm going to come out at night. Allahu Akbar. The sun has never had a dispute with the moon because it obeys the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with us, with our minds and brains, Allah is showing us that look, there is only one way to succeed. And that way is to adopt what Allah, the creator of yourself and every other creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated. There is no other way to receive happiness. You know, when you have a Toyota, for example, wouldn't you be a fool if you arrived at the BMW showroom and you told him I'd like to sell my car or I'd like to service my vehicle. You want to take a Toyota to those who did not make it, they will laugh at you. Now that is a simple example. We don't see anyone with a Toyota taking it to the BMW showroom. Why do we see human beings who were made by Allah taking themselves to others besides Allah to look for goodness and happiness and to service them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Simple example for the brain, for the one who wants to know. Imagine 
if your motor vehicle is not working and you were told that you need to put oil here and you suddenly think that you are too clever you want your car to work the professional told you where to put oil and what is wrong with your vehicle and you take the oil and you put it where the petrol is supposed to go because you think you are clever what will happen your car will stop functioning that is what we are doing with ourselves on a daily basis on a different level where we have problems Allah gives us the solution in the Quran he tells us what to do and where to do it and how to do it and we go for, for a further and we don't want to do it the way Allah decides that is why our spiritual vehicle will halt it will come to a halt it will grind to a halt we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to not to do that to us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding so after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he created us in pairs he gives us a few examples and all of them are to draw our attention to how well they get on and to draw the lessons therefrom listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْبَحْرَانِ He says the two oceans are not the same. They are two totally different oceans. This verse, he says it immediately after telling us that he has made us in pairs. He tells us, look, even the oceans, we have created them, they depend on one another. They are two, two, two. They come in pairs. Allahu Akbar. And this is why they are not the same, but they hold each other up. If one ocean did not exist, the other one would collapse. The two oceans are held together. One cannot call itself an ocean unless the other one is there. It will not be there. One might be green and one, one might be green, one might be blue. One might be sweet, one might be salty. And subhanallah, not only the colors, one might be warm, the other might be cold. But they are holding each other up. Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخًا وَحِجَرًا مَحْجُورًا We have kept between the oceans a barrier. They will not cross the barrier. Mother and father, husband and wife, you have a role to play. Do not cross the barrier. A wife is not a wife unless she has a husband. The husband is holding her up. A husband cannot go out on the street. A man without a wife cannot go and say, I'm a husband. They will take him to the mad hospital. You have to have a wife in order to call yourself a husband. So that is why the oceans are only called oceans when the two are holding each other up. Though Allah says they are not the same. A man is brought up in a totally different home and a woman is brought up in a totally different home. But the two of them together will help enhance one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us inshaAllah portray the best of qualities that we have and eradicate the negative qualities we may be having. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the differences in the two waters. He says, On this side of the ocean, you will find sweet water that you can drink. And on the other side, you will find salty water, but you need that salty water as well. And you need the sweet water as well. The salt pans, mashallah, you find them in Port Elizabeth and in other places, mashallah, where the water is more salty, alhamdulillah. So we need it for salt. Without salt in our food, what would happen? We would never ever be able to enjoy the taste of that food. Try your food without salt one day. And this is why it's important that no one must debate with one another to say, you are the sweet and I am the salt, or I am the salt and you are the sweet, and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We are both equally needed. Both our qualities are needed within the marriage in order to make it work. So in the same way that you need the sweet water for the water, you need the salty water for the salt. Alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is goodness on both sides of the oceans. Listen to what he says. From both sides you will find fish. Fish is not on one side. So from this side you will find fish, the other side you will find fish. In the marriage you will find goodness with the bride, goodness with the groom. But would you ever get fish without going out to fish? Do the fish suddenly jump out of the ocean and say, right, eat me, mashallah. No, that's not what happens. Amazing. What would actually happen is you need to take a rod and you need to fish. But for your information, if you go to the ocean with a rod, you might only catch one fish. You rather go with a trawler and catch a lot, kilos and tons, alhamdulillah. And you can do business thereafter, alhamdulillah. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. An effort is required if you want to achieve benefit from your spouse. An effort is required if you would like to fish. It won't just come to you. The same way, if you want to see the positive points in your spouse, you need to definitely work hard. You need to understand. You need to try. You need to think carefully. You need to make an effort. And inshallah, you will find that benefit, the benefit of pure meat, inshallah, you will be able to benefit from it, inshallah. Let's move further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَسْتَخْرِجُونَ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُونَهَا If you want to make a bigger effort, you will be able to extract pearls from the deepest part of the oceans that you will then be able to adorn yourself with. So if you are ready to make a bigger effort in your marriage, you will be able to then see the shining of your spouse, the good qualities of your spouse, inshallah. But for that, a deeper effort is required, a great sacrifice is required. Ask those who die for pearls, they, they almost risk their lives. But when they come up, they come up with the pearl, mashallah, and they are so happy, it is worth a million other commodities of this dunya, subhanallah. So that is why if you are ready to put on that oxygen mask and go into the deep oceans, you will come out with the pearls, alhamdulillah. In your marriage, if you are ready to sacrifice, even though it might seem to you that it is almost broken, that's not true. I beg to differ. If there is an effort on both sides, inshallah, you will be able to extract those pearls and you will be able to come out with them. Don't worry about the adversity as you are diving. There might be sharks in the path. You might be scared, you might be bitten, you might this, you might that. But it is only with that effort that you will then be able to adorn yourself. And to be honest with you, husband and wife, they are adornment for one another. Subhanallah. It is important that a wife dresses up to the tea for her husband. If she does not do that, there is a chance and possibility that his eyes may wander. May Allah protect us all. And the same applies. It's no use to say the wife must dress up for the husband. The husband needs to be prim and proper as well, inshallah. Meaning, he must not come home smelling and filthy and then he expects, mashallah, to be intimate in the condition where nobody can tolerate the scent or the stench that is coming from him. May Allah protect us. To keep yourself clean is part of Islam and Iman. It is part of your faith. And we need to realize that the, the religion we are following has stressed on cleanliness more than anything else. We need to cleanse ourselves spiritually to start with and then even physically, inshallah. So if you are to make a bigger effort, inshallah, what will happen? You will then be able to dig deeper and go deeper and you will be able to receive, inshallah, the goodness and the benefit of your marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, inshallah, in every single way. Let's move further, inshallah, through these verses. After speaking about the oceans, the fact that they are not the same, the fact that if you are to receive any benefit, you will get fish from both sides. There are different types of fish on either side. You will find a certain type of fish in one ocean and you might not find the same fish in the other ocean. So it does not mean that there is only one type of fish in the world. So many different types of goodness, inshallah. If one thing might go wrong, another 10 things will go right in your marriage, inshallah. And if there is one negativity, there will be so many other positives that you will not find elsewhere. That is a solid point that you need to think of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us appreciate our spouses. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ فِيهِ مَوَاخِرَ لِتَبْتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ Allah says, when you see the ship, it cleaves through the waves. When a ship crosses from one ocean to the other, do you notice that you've crossed into another ocean? The answer is no. It crosses, it cleaves through the waves. For us, there are many lessons to draw from that, subhanallah. I will only come up with one or two. The reality is, you may be totally different, but when you are together, when the others, members of your family and so on, and the broader society happen to see you, you need to realize they must not notice the differences you have. Do not clean your linen in public. You will, they will sail straight through like a ship sails straight through the different waters. It doesn't mean that now you crossed and suddenly the ship starts rocking and so on. Unless an expert will tell you we've crossed into the next ocean. Subhanallah. Without that you wouldn't have known. Is that not true? Yes, it is true. 
So the same applies. There might be certain people who might know that we might be going through turbulence. But as I said a few days ago, that you do not tell your sadness to others. Do not relate it to your friends or family for that matter to start with. You need to make sure you have tried your best to make that marriage of yours work inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften the hearts inshallah. So as you have the ship moving across in order to benefit from the ocean, the same applies to us. If we'd like to benefit from one another, we need to abstain from cleansing our linen in public. When you have a problem, don't scream and shout such that the neighbors can hear you. And don't scream and shout in front of your own children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. After that, the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another example. The other example is that of the night and the day. He says, يُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ The night goes into the day and the day goes into the night. That is the plan of Allah. Listen very carefully. What do we learn from that for our marriages? When the night goes into the day, if the day is short, the night automatically becomes long. And if the night is short, the day automatically covers up and it becomes long. Subhanallah. When there are shortfalls from your spouse, you need to make that extra effort to cover up inshallah. If for example, there might be one shortfall this side, you need to be extra good inshallah to cover it up. And if there is one extra point on this side inshallah, then you may be relaxed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. The same way that is the system of Allah. If Allah wanted, He could have kept day and night exactly equal all along. But He says, no, that's not what He does. When one changes, the other one exceeds or increases or decreases accordingly. What we need to learn from this is, you need to be tolerant. One day you might have to exercise more patience than the other. Something might happen in your house. Maybe someone might do something that you didn't really like. That day you need to have more patience. And another day when you do something that requires their patience, they also need to be patient and forgiving inshallah. So there is a give and take in marriage. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. And look at how the night and the day never ever fail because that is the plan of the Creator. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. They listen and obey to the, in, the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are to listen and obey, do you think something will go wrong? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection from shaitan and protection from the devil. So these are some of the examples Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in Surah Fatir. Amazing. Let us now move to another surah. Surah Yusuf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks of a different example altogether. Remember when the examples are given in the Quran, they are the examples of the Creator Himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There can be no mistake or no error when it comes to the plans or the examples, sorry, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No mistake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of a dream in Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam's surah, the surah where it, his story is mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Yusuf alayhi salam told his father, إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ O my father, I have seen the sun and the moon and eleven stars prostrate to me in a dream. And his father told him, O my son, don't tell your dream to others lest they are jealous. So just leave it. Anyway, a long story short, right at the end of that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the translation of the dream was made clear. What was the translation of the dream? The son that was in the dream was depicting the father, Yusuf alayhi salam's father, Yaqub, Jacob, may peace be upon him. So the son was depicting the father. The moon was depicting the mother. And the stars were depicting the children or the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, the children of those parents. Now if we take a look at that example and we analyze it, it is a biblical example. It has no errors in it. It is flawless. The relation between the sun, the moon and the stars 
is exactly similar to that of the mother, father and children of any successful home. Subhanallah. Now let's go into that. The son, the qualities of the son are those qualities which are meant to be found in the father of any successful house. So the son is very strong, mashallah, very powerful in the home, alhamdulillah. The sun shines, it gives a sense of security. When the sun is out, mashallah, that is when you find the plants will photosynthesize. There is growth, there is blossoming, there is blooming whilst the sun is out. When the sun is out, the stars are there, but you will not notice the stars because you cannot look at the sun directly with your naked eye. Doesn't that depict some form of respect between the parent, between the father in particular and the children? Not to say that you cannot look him in the eye, but to say that he commands a greater respect in the house. That is the role. He is the breadwinner. Is that not supposed to be correct? In our homes, it is supposed to be the case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us rectify that inshallah. The father is supposed to play that role of being the breadwinner in the home. He is the one who is the... the the final decision maker. What that means is, it is the father's duty to listen to the opinions of the mother and the children and others and so on. And on merit, he must then make a decision according to the best opinion that was presented to him. Or if his was even better, then he, he can make the decision according to his own opinion. Now, we have the son. Let's speak about it a little bit more. The role of the son is so great and so powerful. Just imagine for a moment as we go out on a gloomy day where there, where there is a lot of cloud and there is no sun. What happens? On that day, you feel more like going into the bed and going to sleep. Allahu Akbar at times, depending on how dark and windy it is. Here in Cape Town, mashallah, in one day you can have four seasons, alhamdulillah. Sometimes it is as freezing as you can ever think of in the morning. And then suddenly it is so hot and moments later there is rain. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. I think across the globe, the weather is becoming very erratic. And that is very, very closely indicative of the fact that we too as families are becoming erratic. One day we're happy and two minutes later we're fighting and another three minutes later we actually really cannot do with each other and five minutes later we don't want to see each other's face. That is the weather. That is what is going on across the globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So the, the qualities of the sun, if we look at them, there are many more inshallah. We are meant to really be men who have those qualities. Let's look at the moon, mashallah. The moon, you can look at it. You can look at it and you can admire it. Beautiful moon, mashallah. And you can look at it all night and admire it. Alhamdulillah. The mother of the home, the wife in the house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the coolness of our eyes in our spouses and our children. Amen. And then if you ask yourself, where does that moon get its light from? Does it have its own light? No, it doesn't. It gets the light from the sun. So the stronger the sun, the brighter the moon. Allahu Akbar. The more you play your role in a, in a stronger manner, in a more fulfilling manner, the stronger the role of the mother will be in the house. If you yourself are not a solid father, what do you expect of your own wife being a mother? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So you have the role of the moon, beautiful. What happens to the stars? When the moon is out, you find the stars are twinkling. MashaAllah, they are twinkling up in the sky and you can see them different sizes and shapes and colors mashallah this should be depicting the close relation between the mother and the children mashallah because when the mother is around alhamdulillah the children are so close and they are so close that they can actually say whatever they feel with respect obviously but at the same time they are there not to say that the children don't have a relation with their father they are there when the sun is out the stars are still there but the significance of the sun is so great that the little stars are not noticed. Allahu Akbar. So when the father comes in the house, he needs to be a role model for his children. That is what we learn. Subhanallah. If the father is not going to be a role model, then what will you have? You will start seeing stars during the daylight. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Let's take a look at the moon. MashaAllah. The moon has a lot of 
peace in it, a lot of tranquility, calm, there is silence, people are sleeping, they are feeling relaxed at that time. These are the qualities that a mother in the home is supposed to be having when it comes to her own children. You take a crying baby, mostly that crying little baby, the minute the mother takes hold of the child, it will probably go to sleep. The comfort of the arms of the mother is equivalent to none other than the same mother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So that is the quality or these are some of the qualities of the moon subhanallah. Let us take a deeper look at the moon. Do you see a full moon every day? No, mashallah. We are not trying to say women are extremely emotional. But at the same time, what we are saying is, the moon is not there every single day. One day it's full, the next day it's quarter, the following day, possibly after some time it will be three quarter. Then it is a crescent. We all look forward to finding the crescent inshallah. And some days it is not even there. Go out and it's not there. Allahu Akbar. The moon goes through a 28 day cycle and so does every female by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist the women folk in this regard inshallah. So they will naturally have different emotions. We know of a medical term where they describe the emotions of a female just prior to those days. And we realize and understand it as well. The emotions are different. So in the same way, we need to realize and understand that we will not be able to see the moon every single day. We will also not be able to have the same emotions on a daily basis from the same female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection inshallah. The same applies if we are to try and look at the role of the moon. When we see the moon, we will then find that the sun will not be there, noticeable. Though it is right on the other side of the earth from where we are standing. The sun would be shining from the other side of the earth and it would be beaming its rays onto the moon. Hence, we on earth would then be able to see this moon. Let's move to one simple example. When you have an eclipse, what happens? What actually happens? The moon comes into the place of the sun and the sun comes into the place of the moon and we find that we have an eclipse. They have confused their roles. What happens is one comes into the path of the other. Both of them disappear and you won't see the stars. You definitely won't see the stars. And the hadith tells us that it is a sign of Qiyamah. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us when you see the sun or the moon eclipsing, you'd better engage in dua until that particular sun or moon goes back into its course and you see it come back. You engage in dua, you engage in salah because it is indeed a sign from amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one day the sun will rise from the west and set in the east. And that day, it will be a major sign of Qiyamah. Some of the scholars make mention of an eclipse. And when the sun and the moon are eclipsed, then the sun will move in the other direction as it is coming out. And this is why we are told by the Prophet ﷺ to engage in dua and to engage in the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salah until the sun returns or the moon returns to where it is supposed to be. That we know. There is a whole salah known as salah of the eclipse. Salatul kusuf or salatul khusuf. Now what happens is, we've heard a little bit of the roles of mother and father in the house. When mother wants to be father and father wants to be mother, what would happen? There would be a clash of roles. And this is why I have been saying for the last two days, that it is not a battle as to who is more powerful. It is definitely a battle as to who is fulfilling their role in the best way. When mother wants to be father and father wants to be mother, there will be a social eclipse. There will be chaos in that home. And do you know who will suffer the most? The children will suffer the most. Because they are grappling and they are searching and hunting for guidance, for light, for love, for comfort. If they cannot get it from mother and father, they may then turn elsewhere, which might become extremely dangerous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our children, inshallah, 
the acceptance to see the benefit of both mother and father. Amin. We also realize and understand that when a man wants to be a woman and a woman wants to be a man, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ has cursed such people and he says it is a sign of qiyamah, it is a sign of the end of times. We find nowadays, may Allah protect us all. We hope it is not in our homes, but in many places you find people have mixed their roles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left the role of a female, the role of a female. And the role of a male is indeed a masculine role. We need to assume these responsibilities and we need to execute them in the best way possible so that we can achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why it is important that we look at these examples in the Quran and we extract the jewels and the diamonds from these examples. They are not coincidences. They are carefully planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, if you open the books of tafsir, there will come a time when you will come through so many different examples of the Quran, just the parables, just the similitudes of the Quran, where you can derive a lot of benefit therefrom. Take a look at this dream, Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us benefit from this dream, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of all of us in this dunya and in the akhirah. Remember to fulfill your role. Remember the qualities that are required of a male. Remember the qualities that are required of a husband in the house. And the qualities of a wife in the house. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us really from those who can uplift and uphold. And at the same time, when it comes to the children, we need to have a very good link and relation with our children. The doors of communication need to be open 24 hours of the day. If your child cannot communicate with you and cannot tell you exactly what is in his or her heart, then probably your relation with them is not ideal. Because then they will go to the neighbor, they will go to their friends at school, they will go elsewhere and they will want to get help from people who are not qualified enough, nor do they have a genuine feeling, nor do they sometimes have parents who have looked after them. Rather, they will be educated by the television. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So it is important to have a very open relation. And an open relationship does not mean you must let them get away with murder. No, where they are wrong, you need to speak to them, convince them, talk to them, tolerate what they are saying, but then utilize your mind to convince them. The reason we say convince them is, if you were to use the stick, in order to make sure that whatever you say goes, then for as long as you are present, they will listen to you. The minute you go out, they will be on the other side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. But if you have convinced your child to do something, then naturally that even in your absence, the child will know, I've got to read my salah. Why? Because of this benefit, that benefit, that benefit. I've got to tell the truth. Not because my father is going to beat me up. No, because I have a responsibility to my creator. I need to be a good, loyal, lawful Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So the idea or the issue of communication, both within the marriage between husband and wife, as well as the children is extremely important. And we'd also like to open one more door of communication or the importance of one more point of communication is between the parents and the children, the in-laws and the sons or daughters-in-law. That is also a very, very important door. And remember one thing, whenever you want to correct someone, don't hold back. Whenever you want to correct someone, even if they are going to feel bad, for as long as you are polite and respectful, subhanallah, if they are decent human beings, they will understand it. If not today, then tomorrow. You are not allowed to leave back correction where you feel that someone is going wrong. You need to address it as soon as possible because if you don't, they will plunge deeper into the disaster and it may have a ripple effect or a skittling effect whereby so many other people will be harmed by the damage of you not having corrected the individual or the person. So even if your parents are going wrong, your children are going wrong, your spouse is going wrong, your in-laws are going wrong and so on, you need to, with utmost respect, open the doors of communication and speak to them inshallah. And through this communication, we will achieve and receive goodness inshallah if we are sincere and we are good. There is one more point before I end for this evening and that is, 
many times, many times as human nature. As human nature, people think that they are the only ones who are right. And what happens is you sit and you listen to an opinion and you say, no ways, this is out. Believe me, the criteria is whether or not Allah has commanded it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger have instructed something, yes, then we will shut off and we will listen to that inshallah. But when it comes to other opinions of this world, your spouse, your children, your parents, your in-laws, believe me, it cannot be overstressed for us to say that we definitely need to listen to others' opinions and give up your view. Giving up your view at times when it really is just a worldly opinion is sometimes a very great act of worship and it will help resolve and solve so many problems in your marriages and in your homes. Just by giving up your opinion, you definitely dearly think and believe that things must happen this way. Believe me for once, please try and turn and see another direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in every single way. I've decided to keep it a little bit shorter today as it is the second last night. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will be completing the Quran in this masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us all and to grant us all the acceptance to have listened to every single word of the Quran. And at the same time, tomorrow evening, we hope and pray that we can go through some of the supplications and du'as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of in the Quran with the idea of benefiting from it. Starting with the fact that we need to make a du'a that Allah grant us spouses and children who will be the coolness of our eyes. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, describing the believers, the true believers. He says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا the true believers are those who make a prayer to say, Oh Allah, grant us from our wives and our children, those who will be the coolness of our eyes and make us leaders of the righteous, subhanallah. So this dua, we need to make it on a constant basis. The reason is, if you are not married, Allah will grant you a spouse who will be the coolness of your eyes together with righteousness. And if you are married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can help improve your condition as well as the condition of your spouse through the same dua and supplication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness in this dunya as well as in the akhirah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us help one another. And at the same time, may He really help us to enter Jannah through His mercy. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.